Welcome to Trade and Competition. Let's start with the economic integrations. One, the economic union. Now, the economic union is an economic integration where member countries agree on a common economic policy. An example of an economic union would be BRICS. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So these countries have a common economic policy regarding imports and exports. Now, an economic market is also an economic integration where labor, capital, and money move freely between member countries. And an example of this would be the EU, the European Union. So countries that are part of the EU are countries in Europe. They use the same money. Uh, they all use the euro. And uh, you can move from one country to the next freely. You don't even need to use a passport if you are moving from one EU country to another. So that is an example of an economic market. Trade liberalization has to do with freeing trade, right? If we would say the ANC is a liberalization uh, movement, what does that mean? In South Africa, that means that the ANC freed us from apartheid. So it's the same with trade. Trade liber uh, liberalization means you free trade, right? You remove restrictions and barriers on international trade so that trade can be free. All right. Uh, now, a free trade area uh, is a form of an economic union where there's free trade between member countries. Okay, we're going to look at the very, very important trade policy. We have three. We've got protectionism, export promotion. We've got import substitution. Now, protectionism has to do with protecting local businesses or local industries. And how can we do this? We can discourage imports. So it's a trade policy where the state discourages imports by charging tariffs. So we charge tariffs to countries that uh, import goods. Um, that we import goods from, so that there will be less imports, so that we can protect our local businesses that way. It's called protectionism. Now, export promotion is a trade policy that produces manufacturing of local products. So we manufacture our own products for foreign markets so that we can export them. That's why it's called export promotion. Import substitution, remember to substitute means to replace, is a trade policy whereby the country encourages the replacing of imports with local production. So instead of importing, we produce our own uh, goods locally. Now, a desirable mix. Remember, these are trade policies that we've listed here. We cannot use all of them as a country. They might not work for our economy. So we need a desirable mix. So a desirable mix is a combination of trade policies that are suitable for economic conditions. So we must combine the ones or choose the ones that will work for our economy. That is called a desirable mix. Methods of import substitution, we've got four. Tariffs is the first one. Now a tariff is a charge, right? A tariff is a charge imposed on imported goods and services. Specific or ad valorem. Now specific tariff, you are charged according to the amount, size, or number that you are importing. But with ad valorem, you just charge the percentage. You pay 10% of the items that you are importing. A quota, on the other hand, is a limit uh, in the amount of goods that can be imported. So countries are given a quota. They are given a limit to say you can only import this much. We can only import this much from you. Now, subsidies are a cash incentive, but they are given to our local businesses so that they can continue to grow. An embargo is the strictest one because an embargo is a complete ban. So there's a complete ban from importing goods from a particular country. Right? That's called an embargo. All right. So if it comes up in the exam, and it always does, they will ask you why are the trade policies important. So whether it's protectionism, whether it's export promotion, 
whether it's import substitution, you can always give the same answer to explain why these are important. Firstly, they're important because they protect local industries. So that allows them to compete at an international level. That's why uh, these trade policies are important. Secondly, if there's local production, we're producing goods locally. This will increase employment in the country. Remember, if we are producing goods in the country, then that means more people have jobs. Thirdly, it will increase the GDP because more goods are produced in the country. Remember, GDP has to do with goods that are produced within the borders of the country. So if we are not, uh, we have trade policies that encourages local production, then we'll have more GDP. Finally, it prevents dumping of goods into the country. What is dumping of goods? Dumping of goods is when product is sold on a foreign market at a price that is lower than the cost of production. So if China, for example, sells goods uh, to us at a cost that is uh, actually lower than even our own cost to produce these goods, then they are dumping these goods. That's called dumping. All right, finally, we come to the international organizations. We've got the World Trade Organization and we've got the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Now, the World Trade Organization has to do with reducing tariffs and trade barriers, basically, it has to do with trade liberalization, uh, reduces tariffs and trade barriers on trade. Whereas the International Monetary Fund has to do with money, organizing uh, it's an organization that provides accounting and financial guidance or assistance to countries. Uh, uh, if countries need to borrow money, uh, maybe they are having a deficit, then they can borrow from the International Monetary Fund. It has to do with uh, finance and accounting. All right. Thank you, great Thomas.